Welcome to Rust Guides. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the new rail network which will be released on the 4th of March. This is one of the biggest changes Facepunch have released in some time, and needless to say, it's quite exciting to see how this is going to change the game's meta. Before we start looking into the features, I'll show you how to access the work cart branch of staging. First, we'll need to change our staging version of Rust to the new client. In the game library, right click on Rust Staging, then select Properties. This will bring up your Properties window. Then from the menu on the left hand side, select the Betas tab. This will then enable you to specify which version of the beta you'd like to play. From the drop down, we're going to specify the Work Cart Work Cart Beta. With the client up to date, we can now take a look at updating the server. If you've already set up a server, it's simply a case of changing the beta flag from staging to work cart. I've got a video coming out tonight which shows you how to set up a private server. I'll leave a link in the description box below, but might not be out when this video is released. If you followed my guide, open up our run.bat and change the dash beta flag to use work cart. Save the file and then run it and we're ready to go. Now let's take a look at the new features. The rail network spans the entire map and there's plenty of entrance points including an entrance at almost every monument. The rail entrances are small grey buildings and found commonly just off the road, but this may be subject to change in the future. Getting to the rail network itself is a bit of a chore as we have to traverse several sets of stairs or alternatively ride the death box, sorry I mean the elevator down. The elevator is the faster route down, but I was only half joking when I said death box, as I'm sure on more popular servers it will be a great way to pick people off. If you do want to use the elevator, all you need to do is press the button to open the gate and then press either the up or down arrow depending on which way you want to travel in the elevator. There's typically two sets of stairs between the entrance and the train platform itself. Between some of the staircases, you'll have a chance to encounter a new set of scientists in orange jumpsuits. These scientists will be equipped with either the M92 pistol or the M39 rifles. They're relatively easy to kill and have some pretty good loot, similar to those of the scientists in the oil rigs. We'll encounter more of these guys as we explore the rail network, so let's just move on for now. Once you've got to the bottom of both sets of stairs, you'll arrive at the station platform, where you can find the trains. Now I'm going to point out, as far as I'm aware, you can't build anywhere on the train network or anywhere around it for that matter. That includes the train entrances. Now there might be some bugs or something hidden that I'm not aware of, and I'm sure it will surface quite quickly if you can. The rail network is huge, especially on the larger maps so running it on foot should be a last resort unless you're into long romantic walks in the dark. The train, similar to most vehicles in Rust, requires low grade fuel to run, and has enough space for you and your 20 man clan. This is similar to how the scrap heli works where everyone in the back has to stand. The train once fueled up can be driven from the cabin. You'll see a little display while driving which shows you your current fuel capacity and throttle position. The seven throttle positions, zero, which is your neutral position, which should indicate that you should be stopped or stopping. Then you have forward low, forward medium, and forward high. These indicate that you're moving forward at the specified speed. And then finally, rev low, rev medium, and rev high, which is to indicate that you're gonna be moving backwards at one of those defined speeds. Essentially, for the most part, trains are just gonna be a simple way from getting from point A to point B. Ambushes will probably be quite likely, as you can use a train to block another train, which will give a great opportunity for people to jump you. Other players aren't the only thing you've got to worry about on the tracks. There are blockades set up guarded by scientists. You can ram your way through these blockades, but this will damage your train. You also have to remember while you're trying to get through these blockades, you're gonna be taking shots from the scientists. So you need your passengers to help deal with the threat. It is possible to repair your train at the cost of metal fragments. At the moment, it costs 50 metal fragments to fully repair a train. Trains don't seem to explode if they're destroyed by ramming, 
but will explode if you slap a load of C4 on them as you'd expect to. You also can't farm a train once it's destroyed either, as it will simply disappear. You can jump from train to train while in motion, so I'm sure we'll expect to see some high action train boardings in the not too distant future. You can set the throttle position of the train while in the cabin, and then instantly jump out the cabin and the train will still be moving in that direction. If you do jump off the train though, the train will roll to a stop. So don't expect to see a bunch of rogue trains driving around with no passengers on. And that pretty much wraps up everything I've found out about trains and the train network in Rust. This is due to hit the live servers on March 4th along with the slot machine that which I've covered in another video and left a link in the description box below. If you found this video interesting or at all helpful, please hit that thumbs up. And if you're interested in any more of my upcoming content, please don't forget to subscribe.